Shalom, Rasta Sari. Shalom, tonight, Aina is Tarling, Ine Rasia Dinos Tesari Ning. Greetings, this is our brother Yadin, Wyndham Yadin. And this is the issue, this particular issue we're going to address. And it's probably a two part issue, but we'll try to deal with the first part first of this particular issue. And this particular issue concerns the uh, so-called Middle East peace, the so-called Israeli-Palestinian um, situation as it stands. We was able to catch uh, a couple of the news shows. In particular, we saw Charlie Rose um, this uh, Thursday. They're about to go into a vote, and this issue is still going forward. And we're hearing both sides of this particular debate, the so-called Jewish side, and and that particular categorization is, is not really biblical and scriptural and, and true. You see, it's not the Jewish people that came out of Egypt in the so-called Exodus. It was the Hebrews, and there's a very important reason that the so-called uh, Jewish people, you understand, like to keep it and frame it within that sort of dialogue. They'll say, we're the Jewish people, and they'll say, the Israeli state. Why didn't they call it Judea instead? And then it's, it's a matter of hypocrisy. And um, we don't endorse or embrace um, all of the so-called Palestinian claims. In fact, we as a people, we as the once lost but now found Beta Israel, we as those... Um, uh, remnant, that remnant of the diaspora here in the Americas and the Caribbean who recognize what our true heritage is, our stolen legacy is as Beta Israel or more correctly as the Falasha of the West. And this is why we've chosen to to teach and to dialogue on that particular subject matter concerning the Falashas of the West and as well as to document it's important for us to document who we are because there's many who will say w there's no validity to our claims or some who would even try to say we are trying to, quote, be like the so-called Jews. While we can also say among the so-called um, Khazar Jews or some say Edomites that they're trying to be like us. We can look at this in various different, every, everything from hip-hop even now. Should we say the Beastie Boys, for example, to um, the jazz? Should we say some of the great so-called composers, you know, saying, who learned everything they learned from black people? But we're not going to go there with the discussion right here. But one point, speaking of Akhenaten Jazz, and this issue will be called the the, the the Palestinian state, and there seems to be some hypocrisy. I mean, there's a lot of hypocrisy in this, but some open hypocrisy. And once again, we are not all out there on the so-called Palestinian issue by virtue of our interests, even in Israel, as the once lost but now found sheep, as well as some members of our um, community, speaking of the Beta Israel or the Ethiopian Jews, who are in the quote state of Israel. Now, first of all, we wouldn't have to question our um, loyalties or allegiances, you understand, vis a vis the whole Israel identity. In fact, we might actually, as a people, be more even supportive of the so called Jewish state or the state of Israel if we firsthand, as black people, had an experience what we have experienced throughout our long and interesting, to say the least, our long and interesting history or story together, both in the present time and then when we look at who brought the slaves to America. Very good video. You need to check it out. Now, that video is not to so-called hate anybody but it's to really recognize, well, who we are and that part of this so-called um, holocaust 
the Ethiopian Hebrew and the black Hebrew Israelite and the so-called African Holocaust of black people in the Americas and the Caribbean was co-engineered by those who say that they are Jews. So we have to reanalyze this. So we've seen two streams for us as as black people. One is who we are as a once lost but now found people. And we, we've often mentioned these books, and we can let's mention them right here. In fact, let's pull out at least three of these. One is this great book right here, We the Black Jews, right? We the Black Jews by uh, Dr. Ben. We the Black Jews, very, very good and important book. The next book is um, From Babylon to Timbuktu, a very crucial book that gives a lot of the background history of we as uh, black Hebrew Israelites, like Beta Israel or Ethiopian Hebrews, or like Rastafari. There's many different names that different communities and camps might more readily identify themselves, but we're all coming from this particular heritage and saying that our ancestors were the biblical Hebrews, or more correctly, the Israelites. And these books right here gives us the the documentary evidence and the proof to back up and to validate many of our claims. Now, the next book, as we mentioned this before a couple of times, is this one is the Valley, um, the the Valley of the Dry Bones, right? And both of these particular two books here by uh, Rudolf R. Windsor. And this book, as it says right here, explains the what? What the, the conditions that face black people in America. Most um, black intellectuals and scholars, although they may not publicly embrace these terms, they recognize that they cannot dismiss this. But this usually, taking this particular line of, of argument, to who black people in the Americas are. They're not just so-called West Africans and slaves, but there's much more to that interesting history, you understand, and that stolen legacy of who we are. So it's, it's the black people in the Americas, so-called African Americans really need to get this. This doesn't mean that those Israelites or those Israelites over there might be properly representing our identity, how we may feel in this PC environment, but the main facts are true. So even if you don't check for those street corner Israelites and like the way that they put it forward, still the basic premise of their basic argument is still true. And, and this is probably the whole crux of the matter for us as the diaspora in the Americas and the Caribbean. Now, that being said, pointing out those particular facts, let us talk about this, um, this Palest Palestinian, Palestinian state issue. I just cannot get over how they will repeat in the media that the Palestinians cannot try to achieve a state by going to the UN, that that's not the way to go about it, when in 1948, the so-called Jewish state of Israel or Israel was formed basically in the very same way. And I had to think about this. I had to say, how come they do not want the Palestinians to go and achieve a state in the very same way? And then what came up was this Gaza issue. Then the Gaza issue came up. And some of you already know we've talked about it. And it's a very good and worthy point. But, of course, a lot of these careless Ethiopians and others, they don't want to touch this particular point, that Gaza itself is really the imperial property of the kings or the kingdom, the empire of Ethiopia. That this territory that's always in the news, Gaza, historically we can prove you know what I'm saying? We can prove historically, see, the so-called white Jews want to say that it was that Jerusalem and Israel was their special possession. 
And we want to be encouraged in some way to support the Palestinian claims. And here's what we mean by the Palestinian claims. Not all the Palestinian claims, but the Palestinian claims to seek to establish their own state. In other words, a two-state solution. Until we recall how they treated our Ethiopian Hebrew or Ethiopian Beta Israel, the Ethiopian Jews, as they said, the, the, the Ethiopian Jews or the, the black Jews of Africa. Now, some Ethiopian, some Falasha Beta Israel, some of them are trying to do like black people have been trying to do in America, just integrate and just make it. So a lot of them are not going to be making a lot of fuss, you understand, about what's going on, even though among themselves and privately, we've heard this from a lot of um, Beta Israel, many who were in, in Israel, um, part of those airlifts, some who have served in the military, some who, who speak Hebrew. I mean, they've really gone through the whole process, and still even they themselves have their misgivings, not about the scriptural, biblical idea of, quote, Israel, but they have their misgiving about this people that call themselves Jews, you understand, know who have put them through, even they themselves, some of the oldest Hebrews in the world who happen to be black and have all of the testimony and the proof for the so-called European Jews to continue this, um, this, 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 this fatal premise, this fatal idea that basically disclaims at the outset for racial reasons, we the African-American Hebrews and Israelites, like look at those African-American Hebrews over there. They've, they went through hell and still even now, although, you understand, if you judge them from the Torah, if you judge them from, from God and from his, his word, you will see that these are Israelites, that the black Hebrew, African-American Hebrews are Israelites. And so we have to think about this for a moment. Now, do we support the whole radical Islamic agenda? Well, of course not, because since we rep Ethiopia, you understand, as well, then we, we are more than versed, you understand, with who's who and what's what, you understand? But learning our divine heritage shows us that we have to engage these issues from a divine perspective. So there's a lot of hypocrisy in this Palestinian um, issue, and it seems to us, perhaps we're wrong about this, perhaps there's some um, Jews or Hebrews or others out there that can maybe verse us if they can on this, but didn't the state of, it wasn't the state of Israel formed by the, not formed, maybe that's an incorrect word, but didn't the Jews go to the United Nations and get a vote to become a state? Isn't this the very same process that they achieve? So how be it, America, and mainly America, Obama is the one that, because he's up for re-election and all of this, and that's a whole kind of dynamic right there. And yes, that's how the politics go, but that doesn't mean that you, have, that you don't have innocent people you understand, and affected people by such policies. But then, of course, I cannot exclude Ethiopia. What do I mean by Ethiopia? This document here, this document here, the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik, you know why they want to dismiss this document? Why? Because it clearly proves our claims of the black Jews. See this particular document right here, the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik. They try to dismiss it. They try to say, well, um, it is Ethiopia claims. They try to use every tricky and subtle way to try to water down. And in the very same way, they do this with our people. For these reasons, we're saying that we are Hebrews. You know what I'm saying? We're proving that we are Hebrews. 
And we're asking for the same right of return and inclusion. And they look at us and say, no, 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 you can't be Jewish. You can't be. Why? Because I'm black? You see what I'm saying? And then we hear them opine about their suffering for a couple of years in the so-called Holocaust. And then when we say, well, our transatlantic, the Ethiopic Ocean transatlantic slave trade, and our experience for 400 plus years in the Americas, which also quite ironically fulfills Torah and the Bible prophecy concerning the seed of Abraham, who will be a stranger in a land that's not theirs in the affliction for 400 plus years. I mean, how much more clear can that be? The Queen of England just came to America in the last years of Bush's presidency, and she went to the Virginia, she went to Virginia, and to one of their first so-called Virginia colonies, I think Williamsburg or one of these colonies in Virginia, to um, commemorate the 400th year of the establishment of that colony. Now, if you look at how to make a slave, if you read it and study it in the context that it has been written, Willie Lynch, he was in that very same place, giving them rules and regulations for exploitation of the lost sheep of the house of this Arayel. So now the Queen of England comes 400 plus years later to commemorate that. So what does the prophecy say in, in Genesis, in Barashit uh, chapter 15, around roughly around verse um, maybe 15, verse 16 and 17, 18. The whole chapter is very important, but it speaks of affliction for 400 plus years. Which other people, can, did the Germans afflict the German non-Jews, did they afflict the German Jews for 400 plus years? No. Can we look around at any other people that have any positive claims to Hebraic and Israelitish identity who was afflicted for 400 plus years? Well, of course not. If you exempt from Babylon to Timbuktu, you understand the premise of, the basic premise of this book, which proves our travel and, 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 and migration, you understand, from the furthest eastern portion to the furthest western portion, and then bringing us right here to America is this book the Valley of the Dry Bones, which touches on the conditions that face black people in America. And yet these books have not been given their serious, um, not just scholarly study. These are books that really belong in the black church. But unfortunately, the black church today is, is, is compromised. And um, we're sad to say because of that compromise, there will be a judgment because they're not telling God's people who, who they are. You understand? These two books give you a great start. But now when we get to this book right here, the Queen of Sheba and the only son of Minulik, you know what we'll find? We'll find that King Solomon gave the area that's in so much dispute in the Middle Eastern region and, and between Israel and, and Palestinian or the so-called Palestinian Authority, he gave Gaza to the Queen of Sheba. Gaza was given to the Queen of Sheba and therefore comes in the authority of the kings and the emperors of Ethiopia. So now, when we look at the problem that's going on politically in the world, and you trace it back, why is America, in a sense, losing in this world, this seclorum that it created, it is, it is, it is losing. And, and in fact, on Tavis Smiley, he had um, Thomas uh, Friedman who has a new book and everything that actually touches on uh, some of these issues. But the interview with um, Tavis Smiley was very, very interesting. You understand? Why is America, and they, they always trace it back to the Cold War. See, what you don't recognize about the Cold War is that Ethiopia, you understand, was sold, was, 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 was compromised. Ethiopia was betrayed in that sense. You understand? for the whole Cold War between East and West. But with that betrayal of Ethiopia was a destabilization of that most important region of the world, the so-called Middle East and East Africa. Now, this book, if we will consider the claims in this book, and there's other books that can back up the claims of this book. This book 
has a claim in it that Gaza was given to the Queen of Sheba. Unfortunately, the Ethiopian, the present-day Keyless Ethiopians, they do not have um, the Holy Spirit enough right now to really put the proposal you understand, for a Middle East peace. Because, see, that also involves Ethiopia's situation, the Horn of Africa, so-called Islamo, Islamo-fascism in that region. A proper reorientation of Ethiopia concerning the Palestinian issue, the Palestinian state, and, and the state of Israel's hypocrisy. Because the major point about the state of Israel's hypocrisy is this. How can you say to another people, right, a people that have certain claims of being in that region? Now, the European Jews, they will claim biblical reference and biblical history as their own. Yet, if we were to get into a real crucial racial ethnic debate concerning you understand who the Bible is speaking of in that relation to that territory, we find something interesting. It's not speaking of white European Khazars or converts to Judaism who converted, you understand, in the AD, you understand, and have no BC relationship, you understand, to that, they don't have the original relationship to that particular region of the world. See, so what we have here is, on one hand, politics. On the next hand is a mistranslation of biblical, biblical um, facts or biblical ideas that many people who are religious, whether they're Christian, Muslim, or Jew, they accept. Now, my, my earthly father, my earthly father, and may God bless his soul. He wrote this book. I've been talking about this book, The Biblical Antiquities of the Black Race. And this is a very important work. This is a very, today when we heard a portion of Ahmed Anita Jad's speech, and he included the enslavement of black people in the Americas, that is something that black people don't want to recognize, that we are too often um, advocating interests and global interests that really have nothing to do with ourselves. One thing being and growing up into a Hebrew and a biblical Beta Israel consciousness that I and others as I and I ourselves are beginning to recognize is that we don't want, we don't have to get in bed with any of the Gentiles or any of the former peoples, even those who we were enslaved under and support as free people support their interests to the detriment of our own interests. See, a lot of black folks didn't even know that black people, we the black people of the world, we have an interest in what goes on in that region. We have a very, we have a very vital interest, because think about it for a moment. What goes on in that region diverts tax dollars from black communities for, for things like health care, other social programs, to go to the Middle East, you understand, to either the Israeli side or the Palestinian side. So we are losing on two accounts. We're losing on two accounts. This is why um, if a people, don't, a people perish if they don't have a knowledge of themselves and, and, and who they really are. That's why the most important issue to world peace is the black man in America, is the black issue, is the black people issue. That, that, that's the most pivotal issue. But unfortunately, the hardest to convince of this is black people themselves. The hard, hardest to convince of this is the lost sheep themselves. Because right now, many of them are content. They are even content to look up at a physically black president and say, look how we've made it, and not even take advantage of the fact that if he is one of our own or like us, then we need to lobby for the issues that are important to us. The shame of it, there was a black man who was up for execution. All the evidence says that he's innocent. Many have recanted their false testimonies against him. And still he was executed. 
and still he was on the same day as a known racist who killed a black man was also executed. So they figure, well, in this uh, um, um, post so called racial society, which is a big, a big unlaughable laugh, they give you one here, they give you one there, it's a balance. You can't say, see, this is fair and square. Even though the evidence against the white man who, who dragged and lynched that black man was clear, was open, was obvious, but it's not, it wasn't so against this black man who um, 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 they have recently, uh, they killed him. You know what I'm saying? They basically um, killed him. And the shame of it, some people were down in D.C. And they were before the White House. You know, they were before the White House protesting um, to the Obama administration, figuring that the Obama administration would do something. <laughs> but what was so very interesting was that Obama had to fly to New York, you know, saying because he was losing his Jewish vote. The Jews were beginning to get turned off to him at what was going on in the whole UN Palestinian situation. So he basically had to fly to New York. So while, um, while I mean, this is, this is wild. This is wild. While the black people were there in front of the White House, Obama wasn't even home. Now, who even knows that if he was home, if he would have done anything, but the fact is that he wasn't even home. Yeah, the brother Troy Davis. I figured that was his name, but I didn't want to. Troy Davis. It was high drama in Georgia as the execution was delayed and the Supreme Court weighed in the 11th hour plea, but then they finally said to go through with it. And um, a white supremacist was executed in the death of old, that was James Byrd, James Byrd um, Jr. And when Ahmed Anidajad, the prime minister of, uh, of Iran, ancient Persia that is, when he got up to speak and talk about the slave trade and colonization, you had the American and the French and other Europeans and lackeys walk out of the UN. We're told to hate Ahmed Anidajad because he says what he says about the so called state of Israel. Yet, yeah, what does he say concerning we the black people? You understand? Know How does he empathize with our struggle? So for us, we don't find him to be a big, bad boogeyman. You understand? Yet many of us as, as, as a people are put into this kind of frozen psychological state. So the, the real message of this, my brothers and sisters, I, I'm trying to speak about this as though we were in a conversation or we were speaking um, face to face or we had an opportunity to communicate on this particular issue. I didn't want to let this issue of the whole Palestinian state and, and the hypocrisy of... Of, of, I don't know if you call it the UN, I don't know if you call it Obama, but it's not really the UN so much, but it's certain, the hypocrisy of Israel, really, because they're telling the Palestinians that you, that's not the way for you to go to statehood, and that was the very same way the state of Israel or the Jewish lobby, you understand, that got the right to establish their own state in Palestine, they established it in what was known as, at the time, of Palestine. But the whole thing now is flip mode. You see, the whole thing is flip mode. There's been a reverse. Now, there are certain ones in the United States government because of their so-called religious leanings who feel that they have to do everything possible to support the so-called Jewish or Israeli lobby. Okay. Uh, we hear you on that. But then some of us, many of us, when we see how poorly, you understand, um, the Ethiopian Jews, the African-American Hebrews, and others have been received by the state of Israel, receiving tax dollars, many of them which are being reallocated from poor communities. And, and, and we know this is happening. People will say, no, it's not, but that's exactly what's going on. They, they cut programs, but they never cut aid to the state of Israel. So we have to really ask ourselves about this. See, things are not going to change until we advocate on these particular issues, until we become knowledgeable enough and have the spiritual 
fortitude, the spiritual foundation enough to speak truth, as it says, to power is not gonna is it's not gonna change. See, there's a fatal premise. There's a fatal premise that things will get better for us as long as we remain quiet and we don't speak about this issue. The Palestinian United Nations issue, yes, I believe that what's behind that will lead to a fulfillment of Daniel 9 and 27, yes. But the, but the wheels for that are already in motion. But then to deny the Palestinians the opportunity to go to the U.N. I mean, Obama's speech was, some people like Netanyahu, he said that um, Obama, it was a badge of courage or something like that. In a sense, it, it, it was real courage for him to say that, seeing that 12 months earlier, he was speaking about the establishment of a Palestinian state. As soon as the Palestinians um, move on that agenda, you understand, and, and, and really get the traction motion going, then he remembers, uh-oh, it's an election year coming up. So he, he, he reversed script and said nothing will be achieved by going to the U.N. You first have to negotiate, come to the negotiation table with Israel and the United States as the mediator. If there's nothing else that really sets Obama in that kind of um, um, uh, Christian eschatological Antichrist mode, if you think about it for a moment, the Antichrist would negotiate a peace deal, you understand, on behalf of Israel, you understand, and the enemies, the nations, or you could say in this case the Palestinians. So Obama could have removed himself out of that, you understand, by allowing the Palestinians to go straight to the UN. You understand? He could have vetoed it, vetoed it but not vetoed it directly, but sort of indirectly through the UN ambassadors, so forth and so on. But he chose to get on his high horse because the media was buzzing all over the place that um, he has the wrong policy in the state of Israel. You understand? And, and his policies in jeopardizing the state of Israel. And they had some referendum votes with Mayor Koch out here in Brooklyn, so forth and so on. They was about to pull his coat, and he made a about face on that entire issue. But the key thing to remember in this is, didn't the, the Jews, the, the European and German and Polish Jews, didn't they go to the UN and become established as a state through a UN vote and through certain UN resolutions? Did that, or did that, or did that not happen? Now, if that happened in about nine months, why not allow the Palestinians the same right and the same opportunity? How can Obama stand up there and say, ain't going to work like that? That's not how you establish a state. Well, how many states have you established, Obama? You know, let's ask, how many states have you established? Then the part that really surprised us with Obama, and I'm trying to figure out, well, whose interest besides his own is he doing this? Is that his 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 wife Michelle? She's she's a blood relationship of a black Hebrew a black Hebrew rabbi. You understand, Rabbi uh, uh, Funaye, right? They went to a black liberation church with Reverend Jeremiah Wright, you know, this. and so on those level, it's like check check. Uh, I, I hear you. I you know we we come from a similar groundation. Now in this particular issue. Who really is to benefit? Perhaps there's some other strategy in this that we don't really understand, but the hypocrisy of saying that you don't establish a state by getting a UN vote or resolution is, 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 is hypocrisy because that's exactly how the state of Israel established itself, you understand, within the geopolitical sense back in 1948. And, and that's basically all that we have to say on that. And just weigh into this. This is just a little issue on a very important, because this particular issue concerning um, so-called peace in the Middle East cannot be resolved without the true peacemakers. And the true peacemakers are the once lost but now found Beta Israel. You understand? The true peacemakers, the lost sheep, the black sheep of the family are the true peacemakers, you understand, for that region of the world 
and for world peace. Unfortunately, the lost sheep don't know themselves. Majority-wise, they still think that they're African-Americans, that they're just niggas, so forth and so on. They don't know the half of the story concerning who they be. And this is part of the global problem, not just, you know what I'm saying, not just for them in the Americas and the Caribbean, but for world and for global peace. So, so black men, you know what I'm saying, my brothers and, 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 and my sisters out there, but especially my brothers, we need to man up and recognize before God and man who we are and what his divine plan really is. So stay tuned, my brothers and sisters. This is your brother. This is Wendem Yadam. Shalom.